1886 Winchester that has been presented to me for a little help. Um, the barrel on this thing is Tango Uniform. Uh, it looks like a piece of black iron pipe inside. Um, let's see if we can't get this 86 running again, man. This should be interesting. Let's let's take a look um, and go do a little bit of the refurbishment part of, of the four-step process. Down the rabbit hole we go, shall we? Great to have my guests back in my shop. Uh, step one... I would say would be we've got to find out whether or not this entire thing is here it was delivered to us in a bag they said it was all here uh sure let's let's start by inventory now at least we got a magazine tube and we've got um we got a magazine tube we know that this barrel is rotted triggers here trigger return spring mainspring hammer tang bolts Coupling both locking blocks are here. The unobtainium part in this mess is the ejector. Ejectors are unobtainium in these guns. They are very hard to come by. We got that. Got the ejector collar. We have an apparently undamaged mainspring. I don't know, man. This thing all looks like it's here. The guy that uh, wants me to do this for him provided us with a new old stock barrel this gun is chambered in 4570 this thing is cherry this barrel got pulled a long time ago several caveats here that i'm going to point out as we go along but the first step in triage is to make sure all the parts are here casey has already boiled this whole thing out and stopped the rust so we've done step one which is to conserve it we stopped it from rotting we went ahead and got all the goo out of all the um out of all the little nooks and crannies, we got a lot of stuff. If we're going to rebarrel this, the first thing we're going to have to figure out is, is whether or not we can get the barrel out of the receiver without damaging the receiver. And that's a big one. So let's reset this camera, get over to the vise, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. There's a couple of bugaboos in all Winchesters that will get you in trouble if you don't know where they're at. The magazine tube, especially on the large bore Winchester, sits in, and I'm going to attempt to highlight this here, there's actually a milled recess in the bottom of the barrel that allows this tube to sidle up in here. Well, when this tube is sidled up in here and it sits there for a hundred years, you get dried oil underneath, underneath the fore end it'll dry let me get this piece of felt out of the way here so you can see what I'm talking about it'll glue this tube in and you're trying to remove this tube and the only really really good way to remove this tube is to put a mandrel up the inside of it grab this on the outside put a honk and block of wood on the front end of it and crack the barrel and drive the barrel backwards off of this tube it will fight you and you've got to be careful there is a tendency to want to just stick a punch down inside this hole and drive it this way. And I've, I've started to lose count of the number of these magazine tubes where this is blown totally out of there. You want to watch that. There's something else you got to watch. You see this and you think that this ring slides in and out in a dovetail and it doesn't. It rotates. This rotates into a dovetail side to side like this. So if you try to drive this out, you will screw this thing up. Um, now this one, I'm going to tell you, I did a little bit of work on it. It's a little bit loose inside this one. We don't know what it is in the regular barrel. But what you cannot do is stick a screwdriver or a bar or something through this like this and crank on this because it will oval this thing. It will collapse it. I took the liberty of uh, making up a tool here. Let me grab it. I took the liberty of just taking a brass bar. This is the gunsmith at end of this. You may not have to do this, but I turned this brass bar to the point where we will pound that in there and it will completely support that tube. So if we need to put a lot of effort on this thing in order to rotate it, we do that. So the way this gun is supposed to come apart is this: you drive the pin that holds this in out, you take the front end out of it, 
you slide the tube down and then rotate the whole thing and lift it off. That's the operative plan. But you got to watch this because a lot of these have, I, I've, I've had to work on where that edge right there and this edge right here have just been lifted because people have tried to um, push that out. There's another piece, there's a hanger piece that goes in here that has eluded me. I probably dropped it on the floor for all I know. But there's also a hanger piece that goes in the center here and we'll show you that in a little bit. Why that hanger is important because that hanger is what supports the inside of the muzzle cap that sits right there. This whole thing is interlocked and it's tight. The tolerances are down to a couple of thousandths of an inch because they tried to take a really, really large gun and cram into a really, really small space. So they did everything in their power in order to kind of stack the deck in their favor. The next thing we're going to look at here is what it's going to take to get this receiver screwed off of this. What you cannot do is stick a bar through here, I don't even know if I can even get it through, and torque this. Because if you do that, you will blow this side of the receiver wall out. Let's say we wanted to take the, the barrel off of this revolver. If you do that, and you try to torque the frame that way, you will bend the top strap. You will do it, you will twist this frame, you'll walk it sideways like this. In order to take the barrel off of this frame, you would have to build a jig that hangs onto it right there that is in intimate contact with it all the way around and then support the barrel and then pop the frame off. So let's take a look at what happens here when you do this the wrong way. This is the breech sleeve off of a show show that I'm working on right now. It had been welded in there, it had been whatever, it doesn't matter how we got here, but when they went to break the torque on the barrel, it is quite obvious that a bar got shoved through here and when they pushed up on it, that absolutely got bent. And it cracked and it blew. And I can't weld that because the lock and lug is right there and I'm not welding in front of a lock and lug. You do not want to know what it costs to have me. We made one of these out of a solid chunk of steel different episode. We'll get there. The whole point is is that we've got to properly support the barrel and the receiver in order to crack this off. So let's do that. I've got a very large crescent hammer. We call this an all 16th because it works on English and metric fasteners. However, comma, I've got a piece of aluminum bar in here hanging on to this barrel. This barrel is going to turn into a breaker bar. I'm going to throw it in the garbage so I don't really care. But what this aluminum spacer did was is it crushed on this end because there's a very, very slight taper in this barrel. So now I've got a hold on it. The wrench, once again, I'm refinishing the receiver. If I wasn't, I would have two thin slivers of wood inletted and mounted down over this. I don't care if I put a little mark on this because this whole thing's going to get polished anyway. But you've got to turn it right up against okay and I can hear people right now screaming you can't do that I'm gonna tell you this receiver was soaked in a kerosene bath for three weeks and it's had croil on it and we put a little bit of heat and a little bit of cold on it and I threw it in a freezer for about 45 minutes and let it freeze and what it does is it allows me to just pull ah, like that bang and it comes loose and I'm telling you it should be that easy you shouldn't have to fight it that hard and now I can even turn it off with my hand which is a good sign you do not need to torque the crap out of these barrels because let's think about this for a minute the bullet's spinning this way which means the barrel is trying to spin this way and the barrel will tighten itself up all by itself so you don't need mammoth amounts of torque to hang on to one of these Winchester knew that come on amazing a little bit of rust here in the threads but the receiver threads look clean that bodes well for the rest of this project well how fortunate is it that we have a replacement barrel that's actually in pretty good shape. So when we plug this replacement barrel into this receiver right here, the first problem becomes very, very evident 
which is the fact that when we put this muzzle cap in here and we rotate that on, there's about four inches of magazine tube missing. Hmm, what will we do about that? Granted, we could probably find uh, a, a magazine tube for one of these things somewhere, but yeah, I'm not going to do that, and it doesn't make for a very good video. We're just going to plug all these parts. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't an AR-15. Anyway, I'm casting about the shop, and I'm looking for a piece of tubing that's about the right size. So you remember I said everything in this gun is tight, really tight. So you can't just butt weld a piece of thin wall tubing onto this and expect it to hold up and have the inside joint be right. So I'm looking around the, the shop and I went over to my next door, uh, there's a, a, a fabrication shop next door, and I found a piece of thin wall electro, electrical mechanical tubing, EM, EMT I guess, I don't know what the hell EMT stands for. I was an electrician for 20 years and I gotta tell you some of the best looking pipe I ever bent still hanging in a pipe rack not good enough to suck at bending pipe however I'm looking at the outside diameter of this pipe and it's about 600 and 730 thousandths is the OD and I don't know how the heck we lucked out but this piece of thin wall is pretty close however there's something I want to point out here why you can't just go get a piece of tubing that's the right size I don't know how well this shows up but there is a seam running down the center line of this pipe. There's a seam right here. And what they did was is they took a sheet of steel and they rolled it over and then brazed it together. So this is a custom piece of pipe that's just big enough to allow, allow, allow the rim of a 4570 to just pour right through it. So... We really can't make the outside of this pipe any larger. We can't just turn a piece, plug it in there, and then plug it in the back because then you couldn't even put the gun together the right way. So the outside diameter of this is not allowed to be any bigger, and yet the inside diameter has to be small enough to allow the follower to be driven up and down in it. So this piece of EMT is just not large enough in diameter on the inside to allow the follower to go through it. So we can use this, but we're going to have to peel some metal out of the inside here. We're going to have to peel some metal out of the inside there. And if you do all the measurements, there's just enough metal, I think, to pull this off. Or we're going to make a piece and we'll sleeve it. There's no structural component to this. It's just got to be smooth and guide the cartridges, and you got it's got to be strong enough to come in and come out. But it has to come over the saddle, and it has to come through that ring. It has to be able to fit through the nose, and it has to be able to fit through the forend. And I'm telling you, there is absolutely no slop in this setup. So we're going to get up to the lathe here and see if we can't make this piece of EMT sit up and bark. To the lathe!
just about got it right there. Hang on. I'm going to let this fit through. Yes, this is all cut and fried because I'm sucking 100 years worth of... I'm sucking 100 years worth of whatever out of this. A lot of slop out of it. It's all very arbitrary where this winds up because it's just how much soldering surface I want to have. I don't expect it to go zero zero on both ends, but I gotta have enough overlap that it that it will. Uh, let's plug that in there. Bang! That's exactly what I want right there. It's touching the top, touching at the bottom. We're golden. We'll drill a hole right here on the seam to let the solder kind of come out and sort of key it. But that's about all we gotta have. So uh, I guess the next thing to do is solder all this together, and then we'll measure it and uh, come back and trim it to length. We did all this work on the end of this tube here, and we're going to want to make sure that we get all of this flash out of here. Not only do we need to have all this flash out of here, we need to countersink it, because this has to be free to go in both directions past this seam. And once we get it up in there, there's going to be no way to work on it. So let me get a little spinner doodle here out of my, out of my uh, shack, and we'll just go in here and we'll, we'll just cut all of this flash out of here and then once we get the flash cut out we'll keep going more than we ordinarily would and take it out to a knife edge so now no matter what that piece can drop through in both directions it'll just drop through because remember this is going to be coming that way to push the cartridges in and it's got to come this way as you load the gun so it's got to go through both transitions that little bit of surface prep there is important when we're all done we'll put a stick down the center of this thing a little bit of um, 400 grit sandpaper on it we'll just spin it and polish the entire inside of the tube right around the joint there was just enough material to cut the inside off of this and enough to cut the outside off of it and most importantly have this follower disappear down the inside come right out that'll get polished right so these two will just plug together. Now I'm going to face a little bit more off the front end of that until it touches at the bottom and it leaves just a slight gap right there and we'll fill that up full of, we'll just do it with a little bit of low temperature solder. All it's got to do is hang on and then we'll have a tube that's long enough and when we get its overall length we'll come in and we'll start trimming this end of this tube out until it's exactly the right length.
Easy peasy. Let me squeeze you. Couple things to note here. I know there's a zinc coating all over the outside of this pipe here. We'll come back and get it. We're in the we're in the um, uh, in the phase here where we're just going to make it work. So um, w once we get it to run, then we'll come back and make it look pretty later. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time making it look beautiful, but we now have a solid joint, a solid solder joint running all the way through the crack. This thing is one homogeneous piece. We'll take it out of the chuck here, and then we'll go measure it for length. But right now, this is one solid part. I mean, it's not going anywhere. We're amazing. We're golden. All right, uh, let's go measure it, and then we'll come back. So all I'm going to do now is prove that the around will actually go through it and come on out the back end, and that round come flying out the back end. So we're there. Now this is going to prove something else, which is that, that this magazine tube spring may not be strong enough. Okay, we got a little bit of something. We'll have to polish the inside of the pipe, but it's pushing it out. The mag, the mag spring may not be strong enough to. Uh, we may have to get a longer magazine tube spring in this thing here, and we'll have to see because this one had been clipped. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. You can't just stretch one of these springs. It doesn't work like that. It'll it'll unset. If you take it beyond yield, you mess up the spring. So uh, the next thing we'll do here is we'll get a little bit of paper that we had before, and we will chuck it in the drill motor and go ahead and spin it. So let me get my spinner doodle. My spinner doodle is just a piece of uh, rod that's been cut. And it's that piece of paper that we had before and we'll tear a little bit of that off grab my drill motor and go ahead and put this in my drill motor and just wrap this up in there hang on a minute here ah, my fingers don't work I'm having a low dexterity day okay and we'll just get in there and polish the inside of that joint. Make sure we don't have any, uh, we don't have anything in there kind of holding us up and, and, uh, and, and doing that. All right, so let's check this out again. Okay. Take this, take the mag spring. Stick that up in there like that. Cutting forward. Stick that up in there. Well, there we go. I made it worse. That round will come out. I need to polish it a little bit more. I'll be right back. I've got the mag tube now sitting in the rear of its recess where it's supposed to sit. And we now know that it's this much too long. So the idea when you put the weapon together, this is actually cut this way with a rotary mill. So you're supposed to be able to slide this into position and then with a screwdriver rotate it in. So the distance from the, from the front edge of this piece to the front edge of that piece is how much the tube is too long. We're back here with my high-tech measuring equipment again. Troll alert. I'm using a... Um, I, a pair of um, uh, calipers here. It doesn't matter, guys. I'm, I'm just It doesn't matter. So it's not this precise, but I'm going from the front edge to the front edge. And I know that this pipe is probably 540 thousandths of an inch too long. 540 thousandths is a little over a half an inch, which would be about 12 and a half millimeters. Eh, either way. So what we'll do now, I'll just take it in the lay, they'll face it off back to here, and then uh, we're going to put this thing back together again. The magazine tube spring is not long enough 
So we'll just we'll just know that it's not going to feed the last round. This this thing doesn't have to get out of here this evening. I'll I'll get another mag spring for it. Um, but we'll see if we can run it. So uh, let me go ahead and face off the back end of that tube, and uh, we'll get this thing put back together again and see if all the parts are here. <laughs> yeah. Well, heck, I guess it's time to put this together. Glad we got that out of the way. rounds in the gun here so we're hot magazine tube was replaced or actually lengthened the barrel was uh, replaced this thing was uh, absolutely oblivious to put together but there comes a point in the time of every project where you just have to find out whether or not it works or not like us really don't like recoil so I had my friend Andrew here proxy for my shoulder gotta love it guys